ideally it would be great if we can hit 40 and be like, cool, two more years and then we're done. Fire and financial independence is really about just sort of giving yourself control. We are at a position whereby we can say we are financially independent. I'm Chloe, I'm civil servant. I'm very interested in the financial independence movement. I'm Claire, I'm also a civil servant and uh, Chloe and I are practicing fire together. I feel like this, in a way, is really basic stuff that our grandparents knew. So there's the making sure we spend as little as possible and then being really intelligent about what we do with what we've got saved. Hi, I'm Ken. I'm a dad uh, to two boys. I've been on the journey to financial independence for 10 years. I have a lot more options. You can make decisions around what you do with your time. I think that's really what the empowering aspect is. Gatsby, high five. Step one is measure. Measure what you spend, write it down so it doesn't get forgotten. And I think that alone wakes people up. There's a difference between being frugal and being stingy. And frugal is where you spend your money wisely and stingy is where you start cutting things out of your life and sort of suffering in order to save money. I live here with my wife Mary and my two kids. Bought this house as part of what we consider to be our 10 year goal. And the more you see your own money every single month, the more you see of it, the more you can make decisions around, well, what should I do with this spare money I've got? Should I leave it in a bank account or should I invest in a stock market? There's loads of ways of sort of investing and getting your money to do more for you that aren't terrifying and that don't require you to have like a degree in economics to cope with. And part of what I do, and um, having been on this journey, is I write a blog called Humble Penny at thehumblepenny.com and essentially what I do there is teach people how to do some of what we've done. The principles are the same whether you're a millionaire or whether you're on sort of 20k a year. It's spend less than you earn and save carefully and that's potentially harder when you've got to kind of scrape for more of the extras but arguably it's more important. Food shopping for example, where do you shop? Do you have a budget for how much you're spending? The fact that you saved a bit on your food shopping or the fact that you saved a bit from um, the type of car you drive is actually insignificant by itself. But I would add that it's actually almost the, the, the accumulation of those savings that really makes an impact. Find cheap hobbies. So we both love board games. We make a lot of our own um, wine and stuff. So finding stuff to do that fills your time and feels good and exciting but doesn't actually cost that much money. We're big fans of the pay yourself first method, which is when your salary arrives, you take a certain proportion of it and you instantly put it into savings. That way, psychologically, that money isn't there to spend. Focus on improving, number one, yourself. You're the asset, you're the person. If you're not growing, that income's not gonna grow. If that income's not gonna grow, that savings is not gonna grow. Build up an emergency fund and that takes care of emergencies so your boiler breaks your cat needs an operation keep your costs quite fixed as your income grows there's no point making more money and kind of creeping up with it so don't go and change your car to a brand new one keep, keep the same car if you're earning hundred thousand pounds and you're spending a hundred thousand pounds a year you're not wealthy at all <laughs> if you earn a hundred thousand pounds and you only spend 40 then you're going to build up wealth